What's up, guys? This is Ian here, coach of your Latin Lantern, bringing you guys week three of Red, or regional elite, the Regional Elite Draft League. This week, we are taking on Zach T and the Nimrod Ninetales. Apologies that this is a little bit late, than I, uh, a lot later, actually, than I normally would. Um, like five days <laughs> later than I normally would, but I've got a lot going on. Uh, I just started my um, my first full-time job last week, and my cousin is still in town on her trip, so um, I've found sparing moments to battle and record, and this is one of those sparing moments. So, uh, let's run through Zach's team then. He has Greninja, which is his user, Kyurem, Mega Deancey, Nato King, Magnezone, Slowbro, Talonflame, Hitmontop is his other user, and then a Selgor and Gogoat. I was not expecting the Gogoat, and I actually wasn't expecting the Slowbro either, but he ended up bringing the Slowbro. Um, it looks kind of bad against my team overall. And I was a little bit confused as to why he even bothered bringing it, but um, I think I might actually have notes from him on why he brought it. So let me actually just bring that up so I can explain why he brought the slow bro. <sighs> ah, it was to slow Donfin's progress, progress and have typing on Salazzle, which didn't make a lot of sense to me because I thought Kyurem filled that role a lot better uh, than slow bro. But oh well, what can you do? Uh, he ended up bringing it, and uh, that's all there is to it. So, yeah. Um, Greninja is a threat. Mega Dance is a threat. Talonflame is a big threat, and I didn't really prep very well for Talonflame. Magnezone is potentially a threat. Probably not, uh, but it could be. And Hitmontop is not a threat whatsoever. Hitmontop is just a waste of time, and the only thing Hitmontop's doing is checking Bisharp. Um, close combat is what I was most scared of from the Hitmontop, but it's a free switch in for Alakazam every single time, so... Uh, there you go. So I'm going to end up leading with my Donphan. Um, throw him off and make him think that I'm running rocks on my Donphan. I'm not. Um, but that's where I'm going to lead. Uh, if you haven't seen my team builder, you should check that out. And I can't remember all of my team, but I'm Spideff Miltank. I'm Assault Vest, Donphan. We are Rock Polish, Focus Sash, Bisharp, Calm Mind, Hidden Power Ground, Draining Kiss, uh, Comfy, Physically Defensive. Uh, I'm Sub 3 Attack, Mega Alakazam, and I'm Scarf um, Scarf Salazzle. So I'm going to lead Donphan, AV Donphan, he's going to lead Greninja. I'm going to bluff the rocks. Obviously, I know I can live the hit because of the Assault Vest here, no matter what uh, he is, because I'm so physically defensive. Even if, he, if he's physical, it won't kill me. And with Sturdy, a Z-move won't kill me. So I'm just going to Earthquake him here, see how much damage it's going to do. Could potentially put him in range of a bunch of other stuff later. Uh, so I'm going to do that, and he's actually going to miss the Hydro Pump turn one. Um, I don't know, man. That, that just really sucks. And it, it also sucks because I don't get a great gauge on what his set is. I know he's got some HP investment based on the Earthquake damage, but I'm not entirely sure what it actually is yet. Uh, so we're just going to keep going for Earthquake as he actually goes into Talonflame. Uh, good read on his part. Very safe play early game. I was also making a very safe play early game by clicking Earthquake again. There was no reason for me to predict him going into Talonflame and Rock Slide there. Um... I was kind of predicting Slowbro to come in there and Earthquake was going to be fine, but um, now I'm going to Rock Slide as he's going to U-turn and we'll see based on that damage. I know from that damage that he is Adamant Choice Band Talonflame, uh, which actually helps out a lot. So we're going to use that knowledge to our advantage and sort of play around that for the rest of the game. As I'm going to Rock Slide this time as he goes into Hip on top. Now's my chance to go into Mega Alakazam. Uh, he shows leftovers, so I know he's not like offensive life orb or anything like that as he toxics me. Uh, really good play and kind of annoying for the longevity of my Magalic Sam, but I'm going to be able to get a sub up here uh, and I'm going to trace the regenerator of the slow bro, which is like best case scenario that I'm going to be able to get health back after popping a sub. So here's slow bro. I have energy ball for it and it's going to two shot it. He's going to break my sub with the scald, but uh, he's definitely going to die to the next hit here. It doesn't matter what I click, so I click the psychic. Um, thinking Talonflame might try and switch in on the energy ball or something like that. Um, yeah, it, I don't know. It, it really didn't matter what I clicked there again. Um, the only reason Psychic was a bad play is if he went into Greninja, but there's no way he switches into Greninja when he sees that I have Energy Ball. Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> I did that. And now the Greninja is going to come out again, I believe, yeah, to Revenge Kill Me. And I know for sure that he's Scarf because he did that, uh, because he was dying to an Energy Ball. So we know he's Scarf Greninja. I'm just going to go in my Comfy to eat the hit uh, as he's actually going to U-Turn, which is a really good play because U-Turn was going to kill my Megalakazam anyways, and it covered me switching. Again, props to him for that play. Uh, Comfy comes out now, and Magnezone has to be the switch because everything else gets bodied by Comfy, uh, except for Talonflame, as I'm just going to go to my Spideff Miltank here. And we see, based on that crit damage, 
it's crazy that I can do this, but calcing is so much fun. So based on that crit damage, I actually know that he's modest analytic choice specs Magnazone, and I'm getting a phone call in the middle of recording once again. Okay, I hope my dad picks that up because I know that that calls for him. So sorry about that. This is like the third time that's happened in my recordings now. I don't know why people keep calling the house number when they can call cell phone numbers. Please pick up the phone, dad. Thank you. Okay, sorry about that <laughs> interruption. Anyways, modest analytic choice specs. That is a threatening Magnazone. I can't really stay in on this. Um, do I switch? I can't remember what I do here, actually. So I think I actually just milk drink. Yeah. I ended up milk drinking there. Oh, sorry, I go for the rocks because I figured I'm going to be faster than the Magnazone anyways. Get up the rocks so the Talon Flame takes 50% on switch, but uh, he ends up going in a Talon Flame right away. And now I'm going to milk drink um, in case he chokes and he actually shows defog on the Talon Flame. So my milk tank's back up to a reasonably healthy status again. Goes into the Hitmon top to check me as I get a, a Toxic off. Um, and it was actually really interesting to me here that he's not Intimidate and he's opted to be Technician. Um, there's no way he's going to be steadfast, <clears throat> I don't think, because my only fake out abuser is like Salazzle, maybe? But fake out doesn't look good against his team anyways, so he's probably technician, and it felt weird to me, um, but I figured he might have like bullet punch maybe for the Mega Alakazam, um, potentially thrown in there. So uh, anyway, the Toxic's going to help out a lot, uh, chipping this thing down. His Comfy gets basically a free switch in here. The Toxic really sucks that he got on my Comfy. Uh, as you'll see, it's going to hinder the endurance of my Comfy later. Um, I ended up predicting the Magnazone switch in, and he went in Talonflame this time, which kind of felt strange to me, um, because if I got a hit off, then you lose your priority. So if I went for Draining Kiss there, he lost his priority on Talonflame for the rest of the game, and he didn't go into Magnazone. So I predicted the Magnazone with the HP ground could have been really clutch, and you'll see that late game. Uh, but instead, I HP ground, and he brought in Talonflame on it. So there you go. Whatever. What can you do? I probably would have Draining Kissed in hindsight. Uh, just to even get a little chip off on the Magnazone, but it doesn't really matter. Um, Scout it's set. <clears throat> so now I have to switch again. Uh, or no, sorry, I'm actually going to opt to Draining Kiss uh, as he's going to Brave Bird here. And I think I... Um, I sort of just like took away his priority with the Brave Bird there, and it was kind of a bad play, but I really had no switch into a Brave Bird. <laughs> so I sort of just left it as is. And we know he's Adamant Band. Um, it's doing nothing to my Bishop, so I can go into my Bishop here. And I make a really big misplay here as he actually just continues to Raybird. Um, he's lost his priority. He, I could Sucker Punch him. He goes into Hitmontop and I Rock Polish. So uh, that was a really bad play because the Hitmontop comp came in and I saw that he didn't have Intimidate. So I should have just Iron Headed, uh, but I opted or Knock Off or something. And I opted not to, and I opted to Rock Polish. And now I'm going to make another misplay and forget that Hitmontop even gets Mock Punch. I'm going to die to it uh, right here. So Bishop did nothing for me this game, and it could have done so much work if I could have got the Rock Polish up on anything else. Talonflame locked into Brave Bird again later. I could have rock polished on that um, because he wouldn't have been at full health and then I could have swept his team once the Hitmontop was gone. Uh, but unfortunately, I'm going to lose my best Mega Deancey uh, answer, essentially, um, because I was sashed anyways. So it doesn't really matter in the end, but there you go. So what I'm going to do here is... What am I going to do? I'm going to go to Mega Alakazam. Uh, Trace's Technician, again, we confirm he's Technician. He shows Protect, which is weird to me. That he even has Protect to Toxic Stall things out, I guess. But he's getting Toxic Stall now, too. So I'm actually going to double in a Dawn Fan. And he offs to Mock Punch, which, again, was weird. Because Mock Punch wasn't killing me from that range. Um, based on the HP investment that I had, there was no way that Mock Punch was killing me. Um, even Adamant Technician, Mock Punch was not killing me from that range. So it was kind of strange. I'm at 48%, and Mock Punch was not killing me 48%. So I could have just blown away his hit on top, um, which could have saved some health on some things later, I think. But instead, I opted to go Dawn Fan. Um, I was scared of the Greninja coming in on the Psychic, uh, and I shouldn't have been necessarily because Miltank was a relatively free switch in for it. But uh, there you go. So Dawn Fan's in now. And I'm just going to be able to get a big um, knockoff off. Uh, that was my best play because I knew that Talonflame was switching in again, potentially. And I knock off his Choice Band, whatever. Uh, he's actually got a ton of tech on the Talonflame for being knocking off his Choice Band. He was expecting to switch into Bisharp, I guess, and opts to Roost there, which, again, is so dangerous. But uh, it's kind of a safe play because I'm going to assume that he doesn't have Roost because he's Choice Band. And he's going to assume that I'm going to Rock Slide instead of Earthquake, and he lives the Rock Slide, as you can see. Uh, so I actually up to Rock Slide again, as he just kills himself to Brave Bird Recoil. Um, 
at the Turok, oh, sorry, our Earthquake predicting the roost that time. And in comes the Greninja now, um, as he U-turns, which was kind of bad for him because now he's going to lose something to the Earthquake, and he opts to lose the hit on top of the Earthquake here. Um, he's going to be able to take me out with the Mach Punch, but he's going to die to the Toxic damage from something had Toxic on it. I don't remember what I had to, oh, Miltank, Miltank. Uh, so, double down, uh, Miltank checks all of these relatively well right away, so I just went into Miltank. Uh, as he opts to go into the Deancey, and I'm just going to Earthquake him, because two Earthquakes is going to kill him, and he shows me the Calm Mind. Um, we talked after the game, and he said that Calm Mind was a bad play there on his part, and I agree. Uh, I don't think Calm Mind was the play at all. I think you wanted to get damage off of my spit off wall so that something else can clean One of the other two options can clean it up, and probably Greninja, because he would outspeed me. Magnezone is going to have to eat the Earthquake otherwise. He doesn't know that I have Earthquake yet, I don't think, though. Uh, so, that's probably fine, but er revealing Earthquake is my last move is... Um, is fine at this point because he has nothing that's not grounded. Uh, so I'm just gonna earthquake him again because I know I live a plus one moonblast. 100% uh, I lived a plus one moonblast unless he crit me. And I get to take out the Mega Dancy. That crit did not matter because you saw the roll above here was 53. Uh, it was like 88% chance to kill with earthquake. So I just went for it. Uh, it back in comes the Greninja again. Good play on his part. I saved them. I opted to save my Mil Tank there. Um, just as a way to be able to come back. Like, it was a way to revenge kill the Magnet Zone, essentially. Uh, but I actually think that was a big misplay on my part, looking back on it. And I should have just sacked the Mil Tank here, the Greninja. Figured out what he wanted to go for. And just done with that. Um, because Mega Alakazam dies. And um, I thought I foresaw potentially a situation where Mega Alakazam could uh, 1v1 the Magnet Zone. And I didn't really want to risk hitting the Focus Blast to be able to win the game. Because that's only a 70% chance. Uh, so now I'm going to go into Comfy, and I think this is the play right here. Um, or it might be the second one, actually. I think I opt to Draining Kiss this time as he goes into Magnus. Yeah, so I opt to Draining Kiss as he goes into Magnus. It does nothing. shows a little bit of HP investment. Uh, it actually, it shows max HP investment. Um, well, I just sort of established that he was max HP. Uh, so Comfy can't stay in on this, and I'm going to go into my Miltank now as he's going to opt to Volt Switch. Really good play on his part, Volt Switching there, because he threatened my Comfy out, and I couldn't bring anything else in. So now I go Comfy, and this is the turn that seals the game. So it's a 50-50 now on whether or not he switches into Magnezone or stays in with Greninja. Uh, I can Draining Kiss and kill the Greninja, or I can Hidden Power Ground, predicting the Magnezone to switch in. Um... And you'll see here that I actually uh, make the wrong decision, and Zach's going to be able to pick me off and win the game 2-0. Uh, because I have to Hidden Power Ground, predicting the Magnus to switch in, and he's going to stay in with the Greninja uh, and kill me. Uh, so my Draining Kiss doesn't kill him and get me a bunch of health back, um, and my Salazzle doesn't even pick up the kill with the Fire Blast. Um, he, <laughs> it was really strange. I was like, what is even happening? So he does win. Um, if I Draining Kissed, Greninja would have died, right? But even if he switches into Magnus Zone, I could have Draining Kissed into Hidden Power Ground, which would have done a ton of damage. Uh, and from there, I may have been able to sweep with Salazzle and Dragon Pulse. Uh, the thing is that I couldn't have predicted, I knew he was Scarf Greninja, but I couldn't have predicted the speed investment he was running. He was running barely any speed. He was only running out of speed on Scarf Greninja to outspeed Mega Alakazam, instead of outrunning Scarf Salazzle, which I thought was a really good idea. Um, because it's like a sludge wave can just blow this Greninja back right now if the man zone wasn't alive. Uh, but yeah, so very strange. Uh, and we pick up our first loss in red. So we move to two and one plus six. Um, really unfortunate loss on it, honestly. Uh, Zach was current at the end of week two, he was last in the league. And so this was a big week where we should have been able to pick up a win. And unfortunately it came down to a 50-50. Uh, we talked a lot after the game um really late at night right before i had to go to work actually but we did talk quite a bit after the game and uh, i was a little bit disappointed in myself and how i played and i was a little bit disappointed in the decision making pro process i had at the end there but i can't do much about it anymore and so that's gonna be it for me week four we play diet tight and the new britain rock rough i think we 